So today we're going to go ahead and talk about how to lock down this button, how to make this button so that it um, no longer works. Oops, I didn't mean to click on it. How it no longer works based on a user's identification, based on their username. And again, like with all of our videos, we're going to step through these one by one, page by page, with and pause the video so you can take screenshots and use this as a reference for, for your library. So we're going to walk through exactly how to set this up. I know there's several notes on here, but it's it's really actually pretty straightforward, the actions that you need to take. So stay tuned. We're going to walk right through it. So, all right. So here we go. So so we have a user here that signed in, and it's using its user account that's signed in here. When you click on this, you can see who signed in. We're pulling that same information and putting it here and seeing and answering the question. This is an if statement, whether or not they're authorized to access this button. So this is a way to lock down screens within Power Apps. You see, within Power Apps, you can have buttons that take you to different menu options. And if the user can't see the button or they're not authorized, if it's not visible to them, then uh, they won't be able to select it and then um, the user won't ask well why doesn't this work for me why does you know mary little uh, lamb have access and and i don't you don't have to answer any of those questions basically you can hide it we used to call them easter eggs you can put them anywhere you want so so let's go ahead and talk about how to do it so the first thing you want to do is create a list so We've gone ahead and created a list called authorized users. This allows you, if you're developing this app for yourself or for somebody else, this allows the users to easily enter information right in here of who are the quote unquote authorized users. Because you may have users from within your domain, in this case, Lush Advisors, or you may have guests to your domain, in this case, msn.com. So whatever it is, you can add these just as a simple SharePoint add makes it very easy to manage who has access to this page. All right, so once you set up the list, then you're going to go ahead and um, get rid of the column. Remember, um, if you don't want to see title, you can hit hide this column. And then this is a text, right? So you just click on here, say text right here. Notice the T and the T and create it it's pretty simple so let me show you the show you the image go ahead and pause the video and take a snapshot of this bad boy basically here we've hit on the uh, hamburger menu there we've hit lists new list we've put in the name of the new list here we've, we've attached it remember not to my lists we've put it in one of our sharepoint sites and we've hit create okay and then we've gone ahead and added a column called email. It's a text column, as you can see there. And then number two represents different types of email that you can add. So from now on, you can add anything you want uh, to that list. And those emails will be authorized to see that button. Okay, now we need to, since we created this list, we need to add it to our, and you can barely see it right there. We need to add it to our Power App. So you can pause the video and take a screenshot of this. We're going to walk through it. So here to do this, we're going to go back to our Power App, and we're going to click on this guy right here, and we're just going to hit Add Data. And when we hit Add Data, we're going to hit SharePoint, and we're going to click on SharePoint, and then it's going to come up with SharePoint IDs. We're going to hit it, and then notice here it's going to come up with all of my SharePoint. So I'm going to hit Personal. And then once it hits personal, it's going to come up with the list right here. I'm going to click on that, hit connect. Now I've already connected it, so we're just going to go ahead and take a look at it. And it's right down here at the bottom, authorized users. Right here is a SharePoint list. And this is the collection that we're going to build off of the SharePoint list. Okay, so, so pretty simple right there, pretty simple. Okay, now... Uh, we're going to go ahead, and that was on that screen here uh, that we went over. Let's see if we can get that a little bigger. Not much. We click on Authorized Users, and we're good to go. Okay. Now we need to go into Power Apps itself and set the property. So go ahead and pause the video and take a screenshot of this. 
we want this and this. So let's go ahead and do that. So here on the on start, we're going to go to the app. Remember, you have a screen right here where you can define things called on visible. Here in the app itself, it's called on start. And, and what we're going to do is we're going to add in this text right here that you see. And so what we're doing here is we're going to set the current user. This is the name of the variable. OK, and I'm going to show you that in just a minute. User is a built in function that right there. User open and close paren dot email. That's a built in function uh, to Power Apps. Then this clear collect, we're doing a temporary collection right here. And we're hitting our list, which is called um, auth. We're, excuse me, we're creating the variable called auth users. And we're hitting the list right here called authorized users. And we're pulling the field email. So if you look at both of these and you kind of look at what auth users are, you'll see they should match with the authorized user. But when you click on authorized user, notice it's a table. In fact, it's a SharePoint table list so that you can see all of the information in there. Okay. So that's that. So do this. And um, then we'll go to the next step, which is, so pause the video if you need to, but this is the next step. We're going to do a right click on app and we're going to say run on start. Now what that does is because this is in the app on start, that means that these variables won't populate until we restart the application, but we don't want to do that. So we, we can just go here and say run on start. Okay, so let's go ahead and validate. Now I'm going to show you how to validate here um, with some uh, labels, but I'm going to show you another way as well here that I didn't document, but I'm going to show you anyways. So stay tuned for that. So here we're going to put in some validation labels. We're going to create one label right here. So to create a label, we just hit insert text label and then and we spell desired, right? Um, and then uh, we're going to put this in the text field. Current user equals current user. So that's that one right there. So pause the video. Use this for your reference. Take a screenshot. All right. The next thing we're going to do, we're going to enter another text label. But this time we're going to put an if clause in there. We're going to say if current user is in authorized user, then we're going to hit yes or no. Notice this is case sensitive. In is lowercase i n okay and then that's that field right there so let's go ahead and take a look see how that's done so here we've gone ahead and entered a text label remember insert text label and we dumped that down right there and then um we've said here's the label we've gone to the text field right here and we've said, okay, current user, this is the way you put text, that text right there, current user colon, that's the way you do it right there, okay? And the space bar, and then the ampersand and current user. Remember, we pulled current user earlier. We created this right here, current user, set current user to user.email. So that's where that information is coming from. So we're just going to say current user equals current user. So whatever we pulled. And what this validates for us is that you've programmed it correctly, that you're actually getting the username. This is also a cool thing that you can add to any anywhere on your screen. You can use different things to display a picture. It's pretty simple, but that you can do that. Okay. The next thing that we did was we added another text label. Remember, insert text label. And this one is a little bit different. We're going to click on it, and then we're going to go to text as well. I don't know why that text is up there, but here it is. Is authorized. Yeah, that's a text we're putting in colon. And here is the statement. If the current user, remember we already established a current user variable, is in the authorized user. And remember we established authorized users as well, right? Authorized user current user, those are the two variables. And we did it with this list called authorized users email. And then we're going to say, um, we're going to say yes or no. 
And in this case, it happens to be a yes. Okay, so we're an authorized user and it's saying yes. We could change that list and and it would say no for us, but we're not going to do that because you guys trust me that this is going to work. Okay, last thing I wanted to show you, we can set up these labels here. Let's finish finish this out real quick. Oh, before we go on from troubleshooting, and this is not documented, but I just wanted to show you, you can go here to variables and then you can type in whatever variable you want. So for example, auth users, there it is right there. We see that there are two rows inside of auth users and we can then view the table and there they are right there, okay? We can also say the other variable is current user. So that's a global variable right there, current user, and we can see the text right there is appearing. So we can test it that way or we can put these on. I put them on just so you could see how to do that because it's kind of cool. All right. So the next thing we need to do is just, is just fix this button. So we're just going to go to the button itself. Let's go back here. Oopsie. Back to the tree view. All right, so we're going to go back to this button. To do a button, we just insert, right, but, <laughs> hit button, and then um, we can name it whatever we want. All right, and then we want to add the visible property of that button. So that's only going to appear if the current user is in the authorized user true, and if not, it won't, ap it won't appear. Okay, so that's kind of how we make it disappear essentially so that's the code there and let me put this back up one last time so here's the button go ahead and pause the video take a screenshot and that should do it and give you all the information you need to make a button disappear and reappear based on the user that is signed in to your system